pour commencer le président du jury, c'est Miss Dee Wallace, que vous connaissez tous de Howling, Cujo et naturellement E.T. On a avec nous Monsieur Vircola, hein, parce que je dois toujours bien prononcer les noms, euh, qui a fait pas mal de bruit l'année passée avec ses zombies nazis dans la neige, Dead Snow. Et puis pour le moment, last but not least, on a M. Shimitsu, Shimitsu-san, uh, The Grudge Man, which is all très populaire dans les festivals. Uh, I think your next movie is going to be a movie in 3D. So I wanted to know, did you do that for commercial reasons or also for artistic reasons? And if you also did it for artistic reasons, what do you think is the future for 3D movies? 3D is a future well, I, I think 3D certainly has possibilities, but for the, for the time being, I think most of the, the actors are really not up to speed yet. So they, they really have to get into this sort of new, new type of acting uh, in 3D movies, so I, I did this as a, I, I tried to do this sort of like a, a first-time experiment in trying to do this 3D movement. And I think there are lots of possibilities, but uh, whether whether they will succeed or not depends on a lot of uh, different factors still. That was that was a very interesting question because I, I heard I read a very interesting article by Mark Kermo, the film critic, who says 3D only works if you want to make a movie about javelin throw or about skydiving. So unless they make a movie about skydiving, javelin throwers, I don't see the point. So, Mr. Merkula, what is, would you do a 3D movie? Would, are you intrigued by the, by, the, by the new technique? Well, um, you know, we've been talking about doing a, a sequel to Dead Snow in 3D, but, uh, you know, I saw Avatar, which I thought was amazing, but then I, I read about, you know, a lot of studios reworking their old movies as 3D movies, and that is really not the way to go. Uh, and, uh, and the Clash of the Titans, which just was released, was a really bad 3D experience for a lot of people. So I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe sometime, but I don't think it's a necess necessity now. But, but, you know, not for horror at least, but maybe. I mean, James Cameron can pull it off, but I think uh, there's no rush for, 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 for going 3D yet. And if they would, would ask you back to do some looping on a 3D version of E.T., would you accept or you say, get, get your hands off it and leave it the way it is? Why, other than his heart light and his finger, I don't know what they do with a 3D from E.T. I guess the spaceships or whatever. You know, I mean, you, you need action. You need something coming at you, you know. And m most of... Of ET and most films are internal or feelings or emotions which don't serve 3D. I, I think if, if you have a 3D picture now or one that's going to come out soon, that's great and then the, the time for them will go away again like everything in our business and then we'll bring them out in another 20 years. Faire un film en 3D, il faut le penser dès le début. Il ne faut pas faire un film qui devient en 3D après. En même temps, la 3D, c'est magnifique. Ça nous permet de ramener autre, de garder les gens au cinéma, de se dire que aller au cinéma, c'est différent de rester à la maison, de regarder un film en DVD, mais pourquoi pas En même temps, la technologie évolue en plus, de plus en plus. Ouais, c'est super intéressant. En même temps, un mec qui boit un verre de thé en 3D, ça n'a aucun sens. Et puis un mec qui se promène, ouais, un verre en 3D, voilà. Tout, mais pas n'importe quoi en 3D. Uh, just a little question for you now. Um, you, the genre, you know, horror, because you, you've done a lot of movies already, numerous movies. What, what does attract you in the genre? Because you did Cujo, you did a lot of movies, so what attracts you? I like to act. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, it's true. In, in the horror sci-fi genre, you get to play many, many different emotions and oftentimes a, gra a very much greater arc than you do in a lot of other genres. And I like to, I like to play 
uh, all the way from the left all the way over to the right. You know, uh, in ET, there was a lot of comedy and uh, a lot of tension and a lot of drama. Yep. And um, and I am a good screamer. <laughs> so there you go. Could you just please uh, show the audience? I already did that in there. <laughs> uh -huh, okay. sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll blow them out in here <laughs> if I do it again. It's uh, for Miss Wallace. Can you tell me, please, what happened in the action in your acting studio, D. Wallace Factory Studio in Los Angeles? Uh, well, I decided to close it down about four years ago, but I just, um, I had a lot of students call me back up and ask me if I would teach a master class. So I'm teaching one master class uh, a week now on Mondays. Uh, and loving it, actually. I, I'm really glad to, to be back, but I'm not like opening my studio like I had, but I was teaching five classes a week before and trying to keep my career going, and it was too much. But thank you for asking me about that, yes. And I would love for you to check out my website, which has my acting and my healing on it, which is official, official, dwallace.com. I've got a question for everyone and a small question for the Waters. The question for everyone is the, their funniest experience on a, a shootage. And for the Waters, since Kujo, are you afraid of dogs? <laughs> no, I'm not afraid of dogs. I adore dogs. I actually work on behalf of animals a lot and all of my pets are rescue pets. And let me tell you, there are more little chihuahuas running around the world called Cujo. <laughs> so no, uh, all, there were five dogs on Cujo, all incredibly trained, lovely, sweet animals that were trained to go after toys. So even though they looked ferocious from the waist up, we had to tie their tails down with fish wire because they were wagging them all the time to get to their toys. So. I think it has to be on Dead Snow when uh, we have this scene where a guy is bitten in the balls by a, a Nazi zombie. And we were doing the close-up on the guy, you know, the reaction shot on when this happened. And we were really short on crew that day. We had a lot of sickness. And yeah, we, so we put the camera on the guy's face. And uh, for, <laughs> for uh, I was giving the actors, you know, something to react on. So I had, I had to squeeze him um, where we're supposed to be bitten. <laughs> So uh, now I said, now the zombie bites you, and then I would squeeze him in the nuts, and we would get the reaction. That was weird and, and funny, I guess. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> thank you for sharing that. I'm going to talk about the things that I've been doing, but I've been doing a lot of things that I've been doing. 僕は最初に血とか僕は苦手なので痛そうなのが苦手なので僕は最初にクラッとするのを見てスタッフが心配するっていうのが面白いですねWell, actually, of course, I'm known for shooting scary movies, but uh, actually I'm, I'm a very... I, I, I get scared very easily myself, so... When, whenever we shoot a scary scene, the, the crew is always very, very worried about how I will react to my own uh, scary scenes. I wish you all the best here for the next few days at the festival. Good movies. I hope you enjoy yourself, meet a lot of interesting people, have a lot of interesting Belgian beers. So that'll be, that'll be nice. So for this moment, I would like to thank all of you very much for coming to Brussels, to our festival, Monsieur Nadir. Mrs. Shimitsu, Mr. Wiskala, and Mrs. Wallace, thank you for coming to Brussels. Give them a big round of applause.